Welcome to chapter four, accrual accounting and the adjustment process. This is your last video of this chapter where I'll be covering learning objectives four and five, preparing the adjusted trial balance and financial statements, and then preparing the closing entries and post-closing trial balance. What does that mean? Well, as you saw before with the trial balance, the trial balance is when we had all of the general journal entries. The adjusted trial balance, however, is what's prepared after all of those adjusting journal entries that you just did, uh, those adjusting journal entries from learning objectives two and three. After those have been recorded, then you post all of those to the trial balance, and it's referred to as the adjusted trial balance. Uh, in the trial balance, just like uh, the regular trial balance, this shows that all the debits and credits have been made uh, and are equal, and we suspect fact, all the adjusting entries have been made. However, you take that trial balance, that adjusted trial balance, and you prepare your financial statements. And it's only after you prepared your income statement, changes um, in equity statement, your balance sheet, that you can kind of say, okay, do these financial statements, to the best of my knowledge, have I captured all of these adjusting journal entries? And sometimes it's an iterative process because you'll be like, wait a minute, that balance doesn't look right. Maybe you missed a general uh, journal, maybe you missed an adjusting entry. Maybe you had it reversed. You flipped around by accident some debits and credits. So even though it balanced in the adjusted trial balance, it didn't reflect the economic reality once you reviewed it in your financial statements. That's okay. Once you finalize this, then you have your financial statements, then you send them out to your users and you are are happy. So again, financial statements are prepared in the same following order that we saw in one of the first chapters worth of videos. First, we do our income statement, our revenues and our expense accounts. Then our statement of changes in equity, where we look at our net income, then our dividends, and where we go from really our opening retained earnings plus our net income, um, or minus our net loss, minus our dividends, and that gives us our ending retained earnings. Then we add it to what our common shares are looking like, our preferred shares if we have any, and that reflects our statement of changes in equity. Our statement of changes of equity roll up into our balance sheet or our statement of financial position, as well as our ending asset balance and our ending liability balance. And sometime later, we will look at the other statement, which doesn't need to go in sequential order from this, but typically is done like after all this, which is our statement of cash flow. All right, so these are our financial statements. These go out to our users. They tell our banks, hey, what's the financial health of this organization? They send out to our investors, where our investors are like, hey, how's my investment doing? And then the accountant's work is not over because after the financial statements go out, we need to make one last set of entries, and they're called closing entries. As the statement of income is really in for the period, all of the revenues, expenses, and dividend accounts are considered to be temporary accounts. It's for the period. This is the balance. As such, we reverse all of these revenues, expenses, and dividends such that this is what makes them go into permanent accounts through our retained earnings. So it really is the manual articulation of taking our income statement, putting it through our statement of changes of equity, and capturing that statement of changes of equity in our balance sheet. But in order to do so, we need some more journal entries and so we reverse all of our revenues. So we debit revenues, credit expenses, uh, credit dividends declared, reverse all of those. And the other side goes to retained earnings. Then we produce a zero balance in the temporary accounts, those revenues, expenses, and dividends. And they're ready for next period's activity. They are articulated and are holding the balance through retained earnings and they're available to be booked fresh entries into next period. So a summary of this is as follows. 
We have our temporary accounts, which is our for the period financial statements, our uh, statement of income, otherwise known as our income statement, that houses our revenues and our expenses. Then we also think of our statement of changes of equity uh, with our dividends declared. Regularly, our revenue is a credit balance and our expenses and dividends are a debit. And so to reverse those, we would be doing the opposite. We would be debiting the revenues to close it out, crediting the expenses to close it out, and crediting the dividends to close it out. So we would be doing all of the opposite. And then all of the balances would be booked to um, retain earnings. So for example, um, if we had, let's see, revenues of $10, we had expenses of $6 and we had a dividends declared of $1, that would mean our retained earnings would be 10 less six less one. Uh, so that would be equal to our retained earnings of three. And so then if we were to um, see what the net impact would be, uh, that would be a credit to our retained earnings of $3. And that's because we would debit this for 10, we would credit this for six, we would credit this for one, and therefore need to debit to close out our temporary accounts, our, pardon me, credit our um, retained earnings to close this out by $3. And so that credit to retain earnings would be how we articulate through that net income less dividends from our temporary accounts and articulate through to retain earnings, which is typically in a credit balance. So we're showing, hey, cool, you retained earnings, you retained income less dividends in the company of $3, and this is where it would be housed. Your assets and liabilities already went up and down through our general journal entries and our adjusting journal entries. And this is how we articulate and reflect a running total of how is our company doing. So to summarize, first, we close each revenue account. We debit that revenue account for the ending balance. And then we debit the income um, pardon me, we um, credit the expense. They're saying income summary account. Really, we would just do this in, you can do it in two steps, but you'll notice your income summary account um, ends up just going to your retained earnings. So we have to zero out our expenses by giving it a credit. So now we've, zeroed out our revenues, we've zeroed out our expenses, and now this income summary, which can be an intermediary account if you'd like to use it, or it would just be the net impact to retain earnings directly. And then same thing, um, when you close out dividends declared, you credit, you offset your original debit balance, and you would debit or reduce your retained earnings for the fact that uh, the dividends were declared and we're closing it out. So again, um, there's no actual income summary account on your financial statements. It's used as an intermediary, inter, intermediary, uh, whatever, um, account to kind of flow through the transactions. Or like if you're me, I like to just debit and credit it directly to retain earnings because that's where it's going anyways. If you like some pictures, here we go. Our, ink, our revenues and our expenses can be used through the income summary or we can go directly to retained earnings. If it's normally in a, if it's in a credit balance, to zero it out, we debit it. If it's normally a debit balance, to zero it out, we credit it and do the opposite to retained earnings. Dividends declared are typically in a debit balance. To zero it out, we would credit it and then the debit would go to retained earnings. If we have positive, so if we have 10 in revenues, six in expenses, and one in dividends, we have a net income after dividends of three. That would mean we would be crediting retained earnings for $3 here after closing out all of our accounts here. 
and saying, hey, cool, last year after all that income we earned minus what we dividended out to our users, we are left with $3 and that'll flow through um, and be captured in our shareholders equity. Therefore, our for the period balances are captured as at the end of the year or the end of the period in our balance sheet account where we have our trusty dusty assets equal liabilities plus shareholders equity. All right, so friendly reminder that your post-closing trial balance would only have all of your permanent accounts and that would be after everything is closed. You wouldn't have any temporary accounts. You wouldn't have any revenues or expenses on your post-closing trial balance. Um, truthfully, um, we might inspect this a little bit, make sure our debits equal our credits, but uh, this is the post-closing trial balance just kind of lets you know, okay, cool, we've closed out that accounting period and we're ready to roll it forward and open up the next one. All right, one more question, wrap it up. Which of the following is the correct sequencing of selected steps in the accounting cycle? I'll give you a moment and you let me know what your answer is. All right, if you said answer D, first we prepare our general journal entries, then we prepare our adjusting journal entries, and lastly, we have our closing journal entries. If you said D, you are absolutely correct. So now you have seen the full gamut of our accounting cycle. Really, this is the foundation of accounting. Uh, majority of accounting is gonna be accrual accounting, and it's this, it's the cycle. Yes, our journal entries sometimes um, in more advanced courses get much more difficult. And yes, our adjusting journal entries could get more difficult, but we still have to do all of these. We need to figure out, is this a transaction? And if so, journalize it. And after we've journalized it, we need to have our adjusting journal entries at the end of the period. We post both of our regular journal entries and our adjusting journal entries to the trial balance, the adjusted trial balance. And from there, we create our financial statements. And then uh, after our financial statements, we provide our closeout and we prepare our post-closing trial balance so that we can roll forward and do it all again. People, you are fabulous. Um, I promise you it is repeated exposure to same or similar materials as I discussed in the intro video, uh, which if you haven't had a chance to listen to, I do recommend, especially when preparing for your next mini test. Uh, mini test number two is based on this. It is the accounting cycle. So uh, take a peek at your your peers, your students, tips and tricks on how they prepared for mini test number one. And thank you so much for your hard work. I will see you in next week's videos. Take care.